you got to care for them. You, got to, you, you have to pay attention. <clears throat> you have to pay attention. You have to recognize that folks are trying to help you by explaining things to them. But uh, a lot of times it's denial. It's denial. And, you know, people want to say, no, that's not what's in my, in my situation. Yes, it is. Because yeah, you know, people, you know, that's one thing. People will reveal themselves in time. You know, that's one thing that will happen. I know, it's not a problem. I was like, yeah, you got, you got some documents over there. Yeah, you know, you know well, it's always interesting because you didn't have, to, you didn't have to do that. I still don't know which way God's going to go with it, but it's really interesting. Oh, I know what I mean. Well, yeah, all that side of the house is cool. <clears throat> and, and then, you know, um, the interesting part is that um, just watching God do things. I wrote this down some weeks ago. Mm -hmm. You know, we're always talking about. Yeah, I mean, you did the world. Right? Yeah, you know, and, and but I, I, that, I did that didn't mm -hmm. work. And uh, I was going through some of my little notes. I said, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. I wrote this down. But we talked about this word several times. We just never really delved into it. You know, the well, last great times. Yeah, yeah, great times. We talked yeah. about it. But, you know, um, and by the way, uh, welcome to the program. Um, many, many times, my son and I will get to a conversation, and um, you know, we'll just start talking about the Bible and God or whatever. And we'll bring up, you know, certain subject matter, and um, we don't just have a conversation. And I had written some things down uh, weeks ago. <clears throat> I saw myself um, actually looking at what I had written down, but. One of the things I tell people to do is uh, when you begin to study the Bible, that you should get yourself a strong concordance. And uh, I've had this one for a long time. I think I bought this from uh, the late R.W. Schembach's ministry. I think I paid $25 for it. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so it really helps to have it. Uh, you should have, you know, some something to uh, look some things up. Now, this has got the exhausted concordance. I think this bad boy. This bad boy is old. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, I, I, I bought this and bought your Bible. Bought that Bible from Chad Bach Nations too. And, um, but everybody needs to uh, do their own study. It's not just people that are in, in ministry per se. Uh, it's not just for licensed or ordained ministers. Any, any lay person, anybody that goes to a church, really should spend some time trying to learn and dig and find out as much as you can on your own. <clears throat> That's one of the things that I try to get people to, to uh, come to that conclusion because a lot of times certain subject matter is not going to be touched on by your pastor. Um, a lot of times pastors will, will just emulate or regurgitate what was given to them. A lot of times it depends on what their pastor did and they don't. They won't always dig. And, 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 you know, just like this. Okay. My son was once uh, one of the ministers of music at a church where the pastor was a protege of a man that was teaching at a Bible school. The man teaching at the Bible school was blind. 
and the man did not believe that God healed. Now, no doubt, I'm, I'm sure that man has several degrees. But when it boiled down to it, he might as well have been a cornfield preacher who had never had any so-called formalized training because he had been educated out of believing what the Word of God actually says. So that's, so that's what the whole thing about it now. And in, and in the world, we will call that an educated fool. Because you're so educated, but you can't see what's right before you. And I'm not being cool in saying it. I'm trying to get you to understand that you can be a person whose degree, in fact, that was Dr. So-and-so. Yeah, because he, he probably had two or three biblical degrees. But when it boiled down to it, he didn't believe that God was a God of miracles. Now I remind people, the greatest miracle of all is the miracle of salvation. But how can you believe that God can heal or save a sensing soul? That root word, soteria, we get salvation, it means restoration, healing, period. But it also means in every area of your life. Body, soul, and spirit. Yeah, body, soul, and spirit. But you've got to believe it. And this is this is how I want to approach the topic of what we have been talking about for the past few weeks. And we've talked about various forms of the word power and this morning while I was up praying the Lord told me he wanted me to speak about this tonight even before you run into any of the so-called Greek words that flew over there a while ago um, even before you get into any of those Remember, the New Testament is written in Greek and translated into English. And uh, we talked about the various uh, forms of the word that we translate in English as power. Most of us, we know about the word dunamis. I mean, that's the first word, Greek word. You know, comes with dynamis, you know, think about, we get the word, you know, dynamo, dynamite. Um, Although I was taught about Ezusia, <clears throat> it's been said in certain instances the words could be interchangeable. But in John 1, uh, when it talks about you know, in the beginning was the word, the word was God, the word was God, and all things were made by him, was not, not anything made that was made. Um, we're talking about Ezusia, which means the right or the authority to be able to do things. Okay. But what I'm really referring to tonight is even in what you might call more of a normal, but it still boils down to a <clears throat> way to look at the word power. Because, and I will quote Dr. Mike Murdoch, the only part of the Bible that works for you is the part you believe. So guess what? If you don't believe that God heals the sick, you ain't going to get healed. Guess what? If you don't believe that God will save a sin sick soul, you'll never be saved. So, and this is coupled with what we call free will and choice. Because God has given you the ability or the power to choose. Yeah, that's what it means. That's yeah. The, the, uh, the ability to to choose the, the ability to do as one pleases. Right, yeah. That, that's why I said yeah, it is, it's, it's exclusive. The power uh, of choice. The power of choice. And see, what people don't realize is what you choose to believe or what you choose to act upon, it is powerful. Certain things will manifest because you believed and did it, did something, or you believed the opposite way and did not do the action. 
In other words, like James said, I'll show you my faith by my works. In other words, if I believe it, then I'm going to do something. Remember, faith is a verb, but faith is a noun. When I act upon my faith, that's when faith becomes a noun. Because I'm going to do something. Do you realize every time when God when, when, when God used Jesus to heal somebody, he told them to do something. In most cases, he did. He told somebody to do something. So stop and think about it. God wants you to recognize, see, see, you have more power than you, yeah, exactly, than you think you do. And that's that's what that's the big that's the main thing that God wants people to understand. Whether you're in Christ or out of Christ. Because a lot of times as Christians, we really don't think about what we really have. I like how Dr. Wayne Queen talks about it. He said as he he was reading from I think it was in Colossians where Paul was talking to the church and he was admonishing him, like think on these things. Mm -hmm. And he was like and it's a part now where he goes, if you would be risen with Christ, set your mind on the things above. And he said, and he, yeah, and he was like, and the reason why if it was in the, the condition, he was like, because he's like, the reason I come to Christians, a lot of times we be taking L's is because we really don't understand what we received when we got saved. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's getting back to what you're saying. And that's what the Lord's been dealing with me about since he's been having me check out, you know, this this whole study of power. He's like, yeah, I mean, you got way more power than you think you have. You know, and, and now it's it's like, now, once you get the revelation, now you can't act. It's like, faith comes right here and hearing by the word. Mm -hmm. It's like, once it's been revealed to you, now you can tell some stuff. It was like the analogy we gave before about the recipe. It's like, you cook something, you know what I'm saying, before, and it'd be really good, but you don't know how to get back to it. Or it's like, you know, but then it's like, cook it and you actually got the recipe down, it's a wrap because now you can, mm -hmm. you've got the consistency and now you're able to do it. It's, it's something to really think about. Um, we really do have a lot of power in this, this life, but we have to continue to make the decision to do certain things. And when we do them or don't do them, there's always a consequence. See that's, see, that's the whole thing about it. There's always a consequence. Uh, let me read a little bit of the word to you. Now think about this. Jesus in, in Revelation 3 and 20 said, Excuse me, hold on, I said the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come to him and eat with him and he with me. Well, guess what? I remember Charles and Donnie Hill used to always sing that song. Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart. Why don't you let him in? Mm -hmm. So what? You have to let him in. And I remember, and I, anybody who's my age, huh, I would say maybe as young mm -hmm. as 50, would probably, uh, and it still may be, some of y'all may remember seeing this in your grandparents or great-grandparents' house. The one, the one where the Jesus is standing at the door, about to knock. Yeah. And so that, 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 that's, that's symbolism of him. But Jesus said, I am the door. Mm -hmm. Well, he said he's the door to God, the yeah. Father. He's, he's the door to the Father. And it says, no man come to the Father except by me. That's why he says, if any man try to come in the other way, he's a thief and a robber. But guess what? If you don't believe that, right. you, can't, you can't appropriate. No, you cannot appropriate. And, what, and the enemy's doing Everything in the world is getting folks to believe in everybody else but Jesus. Do you recognize that you can, uh, well, they're doing it. They're teaching yoga in school. <clears throat> uh, a lot of the educators are actually uh, giving Middle, Middle Eastern teachings, especially from Hinduism, what Deepak Chopra. Yeah. He, he's actually a speaker at a lot of the conventions of educators across the country. Yeah. Right. Right. But what I'm saying is, 
deeper challenge. He is teaching the educators. Right. And, yeah, so so then they can like they can uh, infiltrate phase your phase of philosophy in Yeah. yeah. So he's gone more back to his basic Hindu teaching. Oh, yeah, you know, so the whole thing about it is we are being bombarded on all sides by everything else except Christ. Well, who are they fussed about? They don't want you to name the name of Jesus. They don't want you to say nothing about God. And when you say that, they're talking about Yahweh, Jehovah. So there's a battle going on, spiritually wise, and people have to make the right choice. You know, the other week I was speaking about when my kids were in school, and I knew that they were, uh, when they got, it was, it was middle school. I still won't say junior high, but junior high was middle school. But, you know, we, we knew they were going to be introduced to Darwinism. We knew they were going to be introduced, you know, to, you know, creation and all that, all that baloney, malarkey. And I told my children, I said, listen, we know they're going to teach y'all those theory, evolution, all that stuff. Y'all believe in Genesis. So look, in order to make a good grade, tell them what they teach. You know what the truth is. Just give them what they get putting out. Put that on the paper. But you, we know it's not true, but that's what they're teaching y'all. See, so, see, sometimes you don't, you have, to, you have to choose your battles. You have to pick your fights. And I did not want my children to get into a thing where they were going to get into an argument with a teacher about creation. There was no need for that. So the wise thing to do was tell them what they said, but you believe what's really true. See, I'd be wise in dealing with it. Because it's just school. See? See? So, so you, you, just, you, go, you just go with that because that's what they're doing. So the thing about it is, is I remember though when my son, <laughs> when he was in, when he was in AG classes at Washington, and his teacher was saying, he was talking about white witchcraft. <laughs> and my son told him, there's no such thing as white witchcraft. You know, white or good witchcraft. And uh, my son told him, no, how old were you, six or seven? No, it's not like that. I was in the fifth grade. So, no, fifth grade? Okay, so you were about, what, nine or ten? Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, my son told him there's no such thing as white witchcraft. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> I, I know I know he was stunned for my son to tell him that. But, you know, he, my son know that witchcraft is witchcraft. But the world teaches that, that, is, that it is. And see, they, they have the depiction of stuff like, like uh, the Smurfs. See, this stuff ties in. It's choices that you make. When I was watching, sitting watching the cartoon with my daughter, who's now 32, by the way, so that lets you know it wasn't it wasn't yesterday. She sitting up laughing, watching the Smurfs. So I sat there and watched the Smurfs book, and I kept noticing. I kept saying, "Now wait a minute." I said, "Gargamel is always working a spell." And I said, "He got on a cloak, a robe, with a hood on it." You know, I'm looking at. It. And Papa Smurf was always drawing a pentagram. Yes, he drew a pentagram. Mm -hmm. he, he drew it in the dirt. No, Papa Smurf. No, Papa Smurf. He's the old one. They're, they're blue. He had the beard. But you're talking about clothes? Yeah, yeah. He, he, he might have been something. Yeah, he, he, he might have worn but most of the but most of the time he didn't he didn't wear it. he just wore the old hat yeah. the old white hat to the side and I but see not only was he doing the pentagram I felt demon power when the pentagram was was drawn and I said wait a minute I said now this isn't right and finally I caught Gargamel with with yeah with his hood on with his hood on. And guess what? I said, wait a minute. Gargamel is a Druid priest. So it was a subtle way to get kids into witchcraft. When my generation came along, they went after us as teenagers. 
through rock and roll, through rock music, through Led Zeppelin, Black Sabbath. And I used to listen to them. Black Sabbath came out when I was in high school. Led Zeppelin did too. So we're talking about like 67, 68. I know by the time I was a sophomore junior was when Black Sabbath was Ozzy Osbourne as lead singer was doing stuff. So see, they went after my generation as teenagers. But by the time my children came along, they started going for them as children. And they are continuing to do the same. Those of you who have Harry Potter books in your house, you need to get them out. Harry Potter is witchcraft. I'm talking about the books and the movies. Power of choice. Power of choice. When Harry Potter first came out, oh, that's cool. You're talking about when Harry Potter first came out, it was two women that came on a good morning show. I remember Rosemary Plot was the ones that, that, it, that uh, interviewed them. And they warned people about Harry Potter. And I believe that was like, it was, it was the early 90s. And she told, they told people they do not need to be watching Harry Potter movies or especially get the books out of the house. See, what they do? It's, it, they, teach, they, they teach them at the school. See, they're infiltrating the educational system. They are putting witchcraft into everything. So parents have to make the choice. You have to make the choice to pray over your children, to anoint them like we did ours. They got anointed with oil virtually every day. <laughs> and it's not fanaticism. It's being proactive. Because what does the Bible say? We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against rules of darkness, against wicked spirits in high places. Spirits exist. Principalities exist. But Jesus said I, he's been given power over all principalities. In other words, that dominion. So you have to understand this. That's the power of choice. And that's what we're talking about. Having the power of choice. But even as a Christian, you have to exercise. That's what it comes in. You have to exercise it. To them, he gave power to become the sons of God. But you only get the power if you accept it. Yes, sir. It's a choice. You got to believe Jesus who he says he is. So I didn't say was, who he is. Well, one of the things that's been uh, occurring in Tazorpa, when you, one of the biggest philosophical debates about like free will and the whole uh, fall of man, it's like people want to get mad at God for giving man free will to yeah. so because man misses appropriate the free will. Yeah. And since we've been dealing with this whole exclusive piece, like the Lord's really been making the original well he said it to me a while back. You know how he'll just say something to mm -hmm. you and it'll just be like, okay, I believe that that's true because I know you said it, but I still don't fully understand it. Mm -hmm. Initially this, this is this goes back he probably said this to me in like 2010, 2011. <laughs> he was saying that free will like in its original intent was supposed to be to create. It's like the way we're using free will now is like the degenerate version. It's like it's like the crappy version. But initially, we're supposed to just use our ability to make decisions to just make stuff, like just create a galaxy. I want to put this over there, da, 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 da. Uh, and now seeing it through the eyes of this exousia, which it literally means mm -hmm. like the, the power of choice is like in exousia. Uh, I understand. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing how. And then, you know what I'm saying, you know how David talks about like the process of, mat of maturation, like that's a Christian, you know what I'm saying, of being restored back to that space because this is this is still the baby version of Kratos, which is dominion. Mm -hmm. And it's like dominion is, it's like whenever you look at what Adam had, like God told Adam to name the animals. 
Mm-hmm. He was like, right. He was like, I don't, I don't, I don't care. You got it. You know what I'm saying? And, and, it, was, and it makes sense because he's like, the reason why you can act like a God is because I gave you the same stuff I got. Like, you are a little version of me, so mm-hmm. you can do what I do. Um, Lee, I was just pondering that in regard to uh, in regard to free will, but but backpedaling for a split second because this is the this is the type of stuff that everybody that everybody receives of salvation regardless of their level of maturity. And the because it's liberty and mm-hmm. doing as one pleases, you know how to how the, they they you know how Paul got all the scriptures talking about the liberty. He's like now he was like now you have to stand fast in the liberty that the God's given us in Galatians. Mm-hmm. I think it's like at the beginning, I think Galatians five starts with that scripture. He says, now you have to stand fast in the liberty. And then he says, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Right. So it's like this still clearly this still ain't on the same level as domain. Where it's like domain, it's like you ain't even gotta be worried about that. Like this is still it's like look, you've been separated from the world, from all of these things. You know what I'm saying like the problems in the world, and now you've been put into this kingdom where everything works right. But what you're saying is like you still have to appropriate. Mm-hmm. And it's like you, you've because uh, one of the and, and the Bible even talks about this. It's like the reason I come to a lot of people whenever you uh, like I just put this post on Facebook about like the movie Lucy, and whenever you look at some of the replies, like with my one friend Jessica. She just put it, she was like, yeah, that's deep. And the reason why she said that was because none of the things that I mentioned had even occurred to her whenever she watched the movie. Mm-hmm. But it makes sense, though, because it's like when you're so, and I'm not saying this in the condemning sense, it's just reality. When you're a part of something, you can't delineate. You know what I'm saying? When, it, when you're a part of something, that is your normal. That is your reality. And it's, and it's like, and we all know this. We've all experienced this. It's like, that crucial moment in our life, like whenever we do come to Christ, we're able, now we're able to see all of the crap that we were into as opposed to what we feel now and how we got clarity. It's like, wait a second, all of this makes sense. Whereas like before, like I was so entrenched in this, I didn't even know that this wasn't normal. You know what I'm saying? Cause that's another thing too. It's like uh, talking about like uh, trying to get the church to understand how much power we really have and what we really receive in salvation. It's like, I like how Ty White articulates it. It's like, he's like, dude, I'm just trying to get y'all to be normal. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get you guys to understand what normal Christianity is. Yeah, yeah, as you often say, Christianity is one-on-one. Right, and, right. You know, I have somebody on Facebook. They're busy condemning religion, but they won't equate religion with Christianity. Right. And sometimes when you're trying to Get it across to people who aren't Christians, or have or have a very limited understanding of, of yeah, you know, it's kind of like the family member that I was trying to get them to understand about about money and the love or lust, and they don't they didn't understand it, you know, I, I call it scripture verbatim, and they, they didn't get it. Because they don't understand that the desire to have money is not necessarily the, the love of money. You know, in his mind, they were the same, they were one the yeah, they're one and the same. Even though I quoted the scripture verbatim, and I, did, I, I wasn't even letting him say anything more to him. But I said he doesn't know the word, and right now his mind is so carnal, he won't get it. Uh, that's the only thing about it. I said, well, Lord, let me just continue to pray for him because he's speaking out of ignorance. I didn't even get offended for him to say no thanksgiving. You know, because what he said wasn't predicated on the word. It was it was his, as my daddy would say, he was dumb to it. Right. And that's what the Bible says. The Bible says that Satan has blinded the hearts and minds of the people of this world, lest they not see the glorious light, which is in the face of Jesus Christ. Like, like you be talking to people, because that, you know, I was thinking about a conversation I was having uh, a couple weeks ago about David Herzog. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? With a very close friend of mine. And I couldn't even, it was hilarious. It was like, I couldn't even, uh, 
if anything, the fear of God hit me because because of his ignorance and the way he was talking about a man of God. It was like that was what I was more concerned about. It wasn't so much <laughs> because it's like, <laughs> it's like, dude, like you don't even understand that you don't understand. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it's like I can't even get you on level one because you so far like you at negative fifty. You know what I'm saying? It's like the only way to even uh, like God. This is something that only the Holy Spirit. Like my job at this point is just to keep praying for you, to God. And, 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 and speaking to that specific situation, I was rather that person last night, and it's definitely true that God's still working on it because I said something about eternity, and he was using all this like Christian nomenclature to describe how what I was saying was making sense, which is something that a while back like would never happen. Like even if it would have came to him, he would have still tried to figure out another way to say it just because he didn't want to associate himself with that kind of thing. So God is working on it slowly but surely. But uh, but yeah. The, the carnal mind does not understand the things of God. Like it just doesn't. And and the thing, and I think another thing too that we have to uh, we have to remind Christians is that we're all in the process of salvation, and we're all in the process of uh, of losing our carnality. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? It's like now it, it, it's 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 a, it's a double edged sword because what happens is is this right? When you first come to Jesus Christ and you're born again, you're immediately made aware. You're immediately uh, made alive. I say how Colossians said it. It says that by the by the power of Jesus Christ, death, burial, resurrection, God has translated us out of, or He's teleported us out of the kingdom of darkness and into the glorious kingdom of light. And like that's instantaneous, and that happens immediately. Like that's not. It don't take. The process of salvation that right. happened. Like you were immediately translated out of this nonsense into stuff that makes sense. But the blockage that we have uh, is our flesh. And so it's like what happens is, is that the carnal mind doesn't understand the things of God. Uh, we're constantly in this process of God saying stuff to our spirit, and our spirit completely understands what the heck God's talking about. But our flesh, our natural mind, is the deterrent. The flesh is the thing, the carnal mind, uh, uh, that the, what the Bible describes as carnal. Some people don't understand what you say when you say carnal. Uh, the Greek word for carnal literally means the animalistic nature. Uh, the fundamental difference between us and animals is that our soul, we have free will. We're sentient beings. Animal souls don't. You know what I'm saying? Animal, animals have a different kind of soul than that's how come the animals don't go to hell. Uh, but saying that to say though, because they don't, because they have a beastly type soul and they can't make choices, you know what I'm saying? That's how come the God holds us to a different uh, kind of accountability. But whenever our soul is uh, ensnared by the power of sin, our soul is basically operating just as low and beastly as animals. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's what it says. It says it's beastly. It's called the you know, sensual, sensual and devil is yeah, exactly yeah. so it's, it's like trying to get cast to understand because what's funny is is you can talk to a lot of unsaved people like I've been thinking about this in just in terms just in terms of chauvinism you know what I'm saying like you talk to like a lot of older men who ain't saved and they they give you any kind of relationship advice it'd be super chauvinistic it'd be animal, like these dudes sound like Neanderthal they sound like cavemen but whenever you stop and you think about it, understanding what the word says about human beings, it's like, wait a second, you're supposed to talk about women like that because you ain't saved. Like, like you're, you're talking, you, you're talking like Adam was after the fall. He was mad at Eve and he relegated her to this, this object. Mm -hmm. you, you can't help but objectify women because you have a, a, a you're traumatized. You're speaking from the trauma of the fall. Mm -hmm. You're saying, whereas it's like whenever you get in Christ, you're saying all that stuff gets fixed, and now you're able to see the original intent. Yeah, I was talking about that. I'm glad you brought that up. I was talking about that on Facebook because a um, person was speaking against Christianity because of, um, and then, but I wasn't allowed to go into it about women being seen as property. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, this, yeah. And, and, and so I said, okay, he's speaking again about a religious system. Right. Mm -hmm. See? Right, but see, the whole thing about it is, right, and I brought this out. I brought out about Deborah, 
being a judge. But see, most people have not read the Bible that much. See, but, but see, the, but the whole thing about it is, is again, I was letting her know you really don't know what's in the Bible. But what what it is, you talking about a religious system in, 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 yeah, instead of what the Bible actually says. I said it was told to us that men love your wives as Christ also loved the church. You know, and then. When what man and woman come together, they be twain become one. So, yeah, you know, and so, see, I, what I do, I gave a scripture. See, I kept giving a scripture. See, I kept giving a scripture because I anybody that knows scripture will know that's not right. See, right. well, and, and I think also you 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 need to write anybody that knows scripture. Uh, and it's been breathed of me because I know that's what you're implying, but I just wanted to say it so it's on the record. Is that when you, when you say no scripture, you mean that the Holy Spirit has interpreted that scripture to, to, to make it clear. The Holy Spirit, like what Jesus said, the Holy Spirit's job is to highlight what I said and make it make sense. He'll lead the guys into all truth. Because if you do just do a logos, superficial study of the Bible, if you look at a lot of those Middle Eastern customs, without the without the enlightenment of the Holy Spirit, you will feel a certain type of way. And if I could just make a quick delineation right quick. Uh, when we look at the original paradigm of marriage, was Adam and Eve in the garden. Adam didn't have a bunch of chicks. Nope. He, was, he wasn't polygamous. He only had one wife, which is the original intent. But whenever we talk about a man being able to have several wives and concubines, there, there are certain things that God allowed in the Old Testament, but it, Jesus Jesus said it like this. Jesus said, the reason I come that Moses wrote a bill for divorcement was because of the hardness of your heart. Mm -hmm. So, it, it, in other words, there are certain clauses, there are certain stipulations that God had to make to the original plan because of humans acting ratchet. It wasn't because it was what was supposed to happen in the beginning. So whenever we talk about like the Middle Eastern custom of having like a lot of women, you know what I'm saying? And basically treating those women uh, like property, that was a result of sin. And God just being like, all right, all right, bro, yeah, okay, so, so, all right, so you need a bunch of chicks. All right, cool. Just build this temple, man. You know what I'm saying? Just, you know, like there, there are certain things that God allowed by his, uh, by his grace and by his mercy. And if you're not, once again, if you're not interpreting the scripture, if you're not having the Holy Spirit make those things make sense to you, then you erroneously interpret that as well. That's on the same level as as all the other practices. Well, I'm saying, I'm just saying, like just add on to it. It's like people don't see the Bible for what it, for all of that it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is the, the God we, or it is the Word of God. However, it is historical context. Solomon did do this. That's why it is in the book. Right. It's an historical record of what actually happened. Right. right. That doesn't mean that God can go because. Rape happens in the Bible. Yeah. But doesn't mean that God is exactly. hey, it's okay. Exactly. It's right. like this is this is what happens and it highlights the fact that you have an all eternal perfect God dealing. Right, we're imperfect people. It's incredibly imperfect. Exactly. Exactly. Who are you talking about? Yeah, because I remember talking about because of sin coming into the world. Right. In fact, I was talking about that because of the full gender, gender issue. Right. You know, I remember talking about that as well. And it's getting people to understand that you can't and throw a little analogy what you can't throw the baby out with the bathroom. Right. And that's what that's what <laughs> Satan wants to have people do. It's like they'll see one little thing that don't make sense to them or one little thing that's wrong or one little thing, let's keep your honest. One one little thing sometimes that contradicts itself and they want to try to act like, oh, what well, that's it. No, nah, we now nah, I knew I knew there was something wrong with that. Nope, 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 nope. And he's just like, dude, shut up, man. Because you know what I'm saying? You, you, it's like I, I guarantee you the stuff that you into <coughs> is way more contradictory than this. And it's like the, the Bible talks about like there are gonna be instances where you gotta write why would it say the right for me to buy? If there weren't going to be instances that on the yeah. surface conflicted each other, mm -hmm. it's like so. It's like, dude, shut up. We already got that stipulation written in the contract. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But but you're right. But you, but you have to tell folk that because they don't know that's in the word. Right. See, a lot of times I know when I put something on Facebook, especially when I'm talking to somebody 
white man. I know they're hearing stuff they're not used to. Exactly. They ain't never heard of it. They never heard of it. You know, it's like trying to get other people to understand. I understand what you're saying, but it's not based on scripture. You're talking about religion, tradition, but that's not the original intent. And that's what you're talking about. It's the original intent. It's getting people to understand what the original intent is. Not what men did, because uh, really I would have to sit back and talk about how the Europeans hijacked the Bible. Yeah. See, see, so you, so you gotta take them back to that. <laughs> talk about how the Europeans hijacked everything from the Jews and then came out with that form of you tell people the Bible is not a Western document, it's an Old Eastern document. And we, we, what we got is a westernized form of Christianity. Then that's when you begin to, to pick out the flaws and say, this is the original intent. This is what was done. And you have to do as, as uh, they do in college, comparative religion. You have to compare it. And see, that's when it's the real comparative religion. Because you talk about the original intent on one column and what man did. See? And, and so... I knew that what I was saying, I said, well, Lord, she gonna get some of it because she's say come by what's hearing. So you you gotta give them bits and pieces of that word. Right. <clears throat> let them chew on it, let them think about it. Because you you know, it's only the word of God's gonna change people. Right. That word says what? God says, my spirit will always strive with me. But when you get a chance to throw some tidbits out there. That's God struggling with you. Exactly. Yeah. And you, like like what you're talking about, they were talking crazy about David. But now they ain't talking crazy at all. Right. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's like yeah. you, you bring correction and you bring them, you bring them to work, word and let that word work on them again and see, because what? They're calmly minded. Yeah. And that Bible says what? They cannot understand the things yeah. of God. Yeah. So again, we're still talking about the power of choice. It's still the power of choice. See, what I want people to understand is you have to choose whether you want to listen to the Word of God. You have to make the decision whether you want to read the Word of God. And I'm going to tell you this. Don't freak out or don't expect to immediately understand what you heard or read. It doesn't work that way. It is, there's a filtering process that has to take place. Your spirit will, at least put it this way, depending on how you are, parts of your spirit will understand the word, parts will not because of all that mess from sin a lot of times. And it's got to be filtered to your flesh and your soul. But God speaks to your spirit because that's the real you. So it's got to, you know, it's got to penetrate and get down. So the thing about it is, is you keep speaking truth, because truth is life. See, he just said that the letter killeth the logos, but the spirit make it alive. So when you speak as an oracle of God, life is there. Whiter, when we get vitamin, life. And you speak life into people, and that helps them make a choice see but you gotta speak from power yourself and the thing about it is is again like my son said the carnal man does mind does not understand the things of God it doesn't make a bit of sense to you and, it, and that's why you be going like what the Bible says so and so it don't make sense that's normal that's okay it's going to take a while because I for the longest time I kept telling God well I don't understand how I could not like somebody, but love them. It took me a while. To me, that was a big paradox. I didn't understand that at all. I said, now, how can I not like somebody, but I can love them? Because in my natural of mind, especially from a uh, uh, you say, Larry, you read the dictionary. And I, I shot when I said yes. The guy I grew up with, he's a couple years older than me. He asked me that one day. He said, Larry, do you, do you read read the dictionary? I said, yes, I do. And, and, 
But it's true. When I ran across a word that I didn't know, that dictionary that John gave me, or Philippe dictionary, I would look up the word I didn't know. And while I was there, I just looked at some other words. And at that time, it was like I had a photographic memory. So <clears throat> I increased my vocabulary. I remember the words. And the thing that gets to me sometimes is you can use those words, and people around you know that you use them in the right context. But a lot of times, they wouldn't use the words themselves. They're making a choice. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. They make a lot of times, I knew I wasn't losing people. They essentially knew what I said and understood the majority of what I was saying. But they kept making a choice not to. Yeah, it's like that. We can, we can attribute that to the same nature because a lot of times, people uh, people be struggling with, like, they feel like, well, no, I'll be doing too much. I'll be mm -hmm. stunned. And it's like, mm -hmm. nah, bro, now nah, you tapping into the rock star. Yep. You, tap, you tapping into the optimal you. Like, I don't, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't want the B-level you. I want I want the awesome you. You know what I'm saying? Like, go ahead and style right quick. Well, you know, the thing about it is, it's just like, and we'll say this about this person who was a Christian, but it's like, Brother Malcolm. Right. Brother Malcolm, when he decided to use that intelligence he was giving, because he was smart, and he was around a lot of racist white folk. He had a, he was around white people that taught him, but they didn't want knew it was smart. They wanted everything got dumb and down. <coughs> but after he got in jail, he realized to turn his life around. Because Malcolm was a very intelligent person as a child, and when he got it together. He can throw. He can say two, three things. And Dr. King will say a few things. But, but James Baldwin. Yeah, exactly. He's like it was James Baldwin who was the most articulate in the civil rights era. It was James Baldwin. So the thing about it is, is there is there there's power in words. There's power in string words and putting them together. And guess what? God has put his word in the document we call the Bible. There's power in it. Jesus said the, the letter or the logos kill him, but the spirit makes him alive. But Jesus said, I will send him another comforter. And, yeah, and you, know, you know what, though? I remember thinking, well, if Jesus said, I'm going to send another comforter, yeah, Jesus will have to be our comforter. Some people talk about it. Some people talk and preach and talk about Jesus being a comforter. <clears throat> but what happens is we don't talk enough about it. But we do say when things go wrong, call on Jesus. Right. So he would have to be a comfort. You know, I, yeah, I think sometimes, yeah, sometimes we that we don't talk enough about him in that sense. Mm -hmm. But he says what? He said, he said, he can't come. He's not going to come until I leave. So that's why we talk about the Holy Spirit. So if you don't understand what's in the Word, the Holy Spirit is a person, not an it. He's he is not a dove. He he is not a flame of fire. He can manifest himself in those images, but the Holy Spirit is a person. You can talk to him, and he will lead and guide you in all truth. Now, who's also the truth? Jesus. Yeah, he always gonna testify. Jesus said that he would testify, testify on me. On me. Yeah. So every time the uh yeah, every time you just be minding your own business and like a scripture will just pop up in your head and it'll just make sense, that's the Holy Spirit talking to you. And I think that that's important too because I remember posting this and a lot of people jumped on it. I was saying how the Lord just said to me just randomly one day. About about a month ago, and some changes now. He was just like, yeah. He was like, you need to be able to discern the difference between my spirit, my son, and then you know the father. And but but it did make it made whenever he said it, I was like, yo, that makes perfect sense because there'd be like different manifestations. You know what I'm saying? Like there's sometimes when I'm in my room, and it was very obvious that the glory of God is present. Like mm -hmm. this this just say you know what I'm saying? This is like whoa, like you're here, okay. And then there are other instances where it's just like, yo, man, it's just, this is hot. Like, but this ain't no normal heat. Like, this is just that G, you know what I'm saying? And then, you know, then there are other times where it can just be like a real, just real calm serene. Uh, I, I could, I could, you know what I'm saying, go through the, through the different range, but uh, it's imperative at this, at this point, uh, you know what I'm saying, like the people who, uh, who 
following you know this this particular movement uh it's like that's what that's what god is saying like cats need to be aware of it's like being able to understand the different voices mm -hmm. that are coming to us because each voice has a very specific administration and, and a very specific uh, edification mm -hmm. that he brings. Like there's a certain stuff that the Holy Spirit is going to share with us and Jesus isn't. It ain't because Jesus can't, but it's just that's what the Holy Spirit's job is to do. Mm -hmm. And it's like, and then the, and then the, uh, as we mature, there's certain things that his pop that the Father's just going to say to us that Jesus can't say to us because he ain't he his dad. You know what I'm saying? And uh, being, being aware of that a lot of times will help uh, cut down on any kind of uh, insecurity or any kind of confusion. It, it, it's like it's all about having that uh, having that clarity. So just going back to what we were just saying, the person who's always going to interpret the scriptures and make the scriptures make sense, that's the Holy Spirit talking to you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I woke up this morning. You know what I'm saying? I had this real crazy dream. And I woke up this morning. And Jesus was uh, was taught. Now I knew that this it was interesting because I just knew that this was Jesus. Uh, part of the reason I come and I knew it was Jesus was because he took me to the part where he was praying for Peter, and he was that was the part he was quoting to me. He was saying he was like, "Yeah, dude, he was like Satan has desired to sit through his people." And he was like, "I pray for you that whenever you're converted, the church will be your brethren." And then he was taking me to all these other. Uh, he took me to Psalm 18. He was like. Like I'm your shield and your guard, so that your feet won't slip. You know what I'm saying? Because in the dream, you know what I'm saying? It was, it was an attack against my feet. Mm -hmm. And so I immediately wake up and I'm thinking, okay, I just saw that. And then boom, 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 boom. So there are certain instances whenever Jesus is going to be talking to you, there are certain instances whenever the Holy Spirit is going to be talking to you, then there's going to be certain instances whenever the Father is going to be talking to you. And by understanding, those differences, there's a certain strength, there's a certain edification. And it makes sense that Jesus would be talking to me about that being that I've been studying in Zuzia, the power that Jesus gives you at salvation as opposed to the dunamis. I mean, I've been checking out the dunamis because that's necessary. And I've been checking out the Kratos, but for me right now, like, Exusia has been like the joint. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I've been really delving into. And, you know, it's just, it, it's, it is, uh, you know, it's the well, the thing about it is, is you start thinking about authority. When you start thinking about that you have authority, that means a great deal because a lot of times, just knowing you have authority, man, this is a certain posture that you take. Oh, you know, yeah, you know, yeah, you know. I was yeah. watching some Mike Tyson footage back when he was in his prime, and he was walking the streets of Paris, and he was bopping so hard, but it's like he could beat up anybody on the planet, like for the most part. He said, the man is man. I mean, you're going to walk different. It's the same thing with this exousia. Like, when you really understand, because the part where Jesus uh, gave the disciple, when he gave the 70 exousia, and then he sent them out, and they were casting out demons, they were raising, they were raising the dead, they were healing the sick. He said to them, he was like, look, man, all power has been given unto people from heaven and earth. Well, hang on, I'll fast forward to the end of the book. Whenever he gave it to him, he said, I have given you exousia over all the dudes of the enemy. So once again, he was he was naming the hierarchy. He's like, look, bro, like I've given you power, I've given you citizenship, I've given you all of the divine rights that apply to our government. <coughs> Whereas the enemy, the enemy, he's just he just has like it's almost like territory exactly it's like, yeah, it's like, bro, you got local jurisdiction, whereas I just gave you like global jurisdiction. Yeah, and it makes a big difference too because you once you recognize that you can do a heck of a lot more damage because you understand what you walk in. Because you walk in authority. Now, I can remember people preaching you and teaching about authority, but most of the time when it was done, it was a Yeah, but that, that gets back to what David was saying. It's like the, the, unfortunately people acted and, and and whenever he said this, I wanted to high five him again because I was thinking the same thing. I remember saying this to a young lady that was corresponding with the ministry a while back and she got offended. I think we I think we were all three on the phone. I was telling her out of the church. I was like, yo, I was like, we're behind. Yeah. And she got like really offended. Yeah. I understand because it's like the second you start talking about any type of deficiencies, like on a massive scale, people immediately associate themselves with that deficiency and then they get offended. And it's like, bro. What makes you think I ain't talking about myself either? You know what I'm saying? Uh, I ain't walked through walls yet either. You know what I'm saying? But uh, but saying that to say, uh, people, it's like 
and, and this this goes to a question that I'm going to pose to you uh, while we're on camera too. People have uh, have deified the Azusa Street movement. They they they've elevated it to a place beyond what the Holy Spirit wanted it to be. It's like people people have rested in the laurels of Azusa Street of the Azusa Street revival rather than seeing it for what it was supposed to be properly. It was like, dude, like, Azusa Street was a painful reminder of how dead the church was. You mean to tell me that in 1906, it took 1906 years for a Pentecost, for Pentecost for the Holy Spirit to like break out on Christians, people who swear up and down they like Christ. It took the Holy Spirit 1906 years for him to manifest you know what I'm saying? And empower people to actually go out and do the work of the ministry. It took that long. Like, and as amazing as Azusa Street is, and you, you know, you know I ain't saying nothing blasphemous. You know what I'm saying? It's like as amazing as Azusa Street was uh, or is the Azusa Street revival, because we're products, we're benefiting off of that revival. It's still a it's still a reminder though of how far the church is behind. Oh, yeah, behind. Because it's like the the outpouring of the Holy Spirit is supposed to be a normal part of Christianity. Like this ain't supposed to just be like a particular like denominational phenomenon or something that happens like every once in a while. Like what happened in Azusa Street was like that was Acts chapter two. You know what I'm saying? Like if we if we were to act like the chapters mean mm -hmm. something in terms of like the the, the growth or like the it's like dude we did we ain't even in the in the in the second chapter and that happened. So how far are we behind? You know what I'm saying? If, if, if stuff is in the second chapter, how many chapters are in the book of Acts? You know? But the question I want to place to you was, and we talked about this briefly, how how the beef between Baptists, particularly, uh, well, not because primitive Baptists, they believe a lot of Pentecostal stuff, so we'll get into past ones for a second, but particularly the missionary Baptists like the smoke track, how they uh, intentionally uh, in some instances, use Exusia as an excuse to not go on yeah. to do <clears throat> the yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm glad you did bring it up because what yeah. was brought up the other night for Durham, <clears throat> he didn't exactly talk about that, but I'm I'm 20 some years older and I heard a few sermons that he probably never heard. Um, the thing about it is, now, on my mom's side, um, primitive and missionary Baptist. So my dad's out a missionary Baptist. So primarily, but I was raised in the primitive, from the primitive Baptist, but I was raised in a missionary Baptist church. Okay. Most, and, and, and I'm going to say this, if there's anybody Caucasian watching me, then you're Southern Baptist. But the doctors are virtually the same Southern Baptist and missionary Baptist if you're black. What man did in the Missionary Baptist Church was take <clears throat> the power that transformed him from death unto life. Yeah, Exusia. They used that as an excuse not to go on to Dunamis, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And folk were saying, well, I have the Holy Spirit. I can remember my my aunt's husband saying he had the Holy Spirit. I said, yeah, but you don't have the baptism. I said, baptism means to immerse. I said, I've been immersed in him. You have it. I said, you have salvation, but you don't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Why? Because they want to use it as an excuse not to speak in tongues. Now, my son, I saw his Facebook post. He said what? There were two kinds of folk in the world. If you were saved, you were a Jewish believer that had gotten saved, or you were a Gentile believer that had gotten saved. And that's true. If you were a Christian, that's the only kind of Christian that you were. The nominationalism has been the problem. Men want to take something and, and split things up. Again, that's religion. Not Christianity. It's getting people to understand that. Now, I saw something that was good, I think, in, uh, in Charisma Magazine. It says that the uh, Southern Baptists, which is primarily, most of the Southern Baptists are white, 
there are a few that are black. In fact, I don't know if he still is, but I know one of them, four years ago, <clears throat> the president of, of, uh, of uh, Southern Baptist was actually a black guy. He was president of the, of the denomination. I don't know if he still is, but most of the Baptists are white people. But it's been said they're, they're going to stop kicking out Baptists that speak in tongues now. Mm -hmm. but that's what they would do. Stop. Yeah. They just kick you out. They they, you've been kicking folk out. You get you get back you, you get back to the Holy Ghost. Praying in the spirit. Yes, they kick you out. If you got a if you got a license, they take your license from you. They kick you out because that wasn't Baptist doctrine. Oh, they, they <clears throat> yeah, yeah, they yeah they reject Baptist and the Holy Ghost, and so now they realize. See again, like my son is saying, <laughs> why? Is it 2015 years later? And they just now did. And they just saying, we're not we're gonna stop. We in other words, we're not gonna excommunicate you. We're not what they were doing. Baptist, yeah. Yeah. Right, right, right. How smart is that? <laughs> but, but speaking to that, to that very point, like in scripture, I'm trying to find out when I found the one that's in Acts the eighth chapter. But there was there's a there's a passage in Acts where these Christians they were disciples of John, mm -hmm. and they came to the apostles. Oh, they didn't and even know it was even a, exactly. a, 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 a thing. They said, we had never heard of Holy Ghost. They had not heard. I would say, they explained, explained the gospel to them more fully or more fully. Exactly. And then they received the gift of the Holy Spirit. But, but this, is, I've ran across this one, and I see how come the <coughs> is, is, is relevant to what we're talking about. Because we're, we're talking about the initial power that we receive from Jesus as salvation and then how Jesus says that the Holy Spirit testifies with me how that the, the power that the Holy Spirit gives at Pentecost is an amplification, it's, it's an upgrade from or it's a more specific uh uh they Yeah they 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 work in tandem exactly you know what I'm saying the uh so in Acts eight verses fourteen through seventeen it says that whenever the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that the people of Samaria have received the word of God, then they sent unto them Peter and John. And it says, Who, whenever they would come down, they prayed for the people that they might receive the Holy Ghost. Then it says in verse 16, For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And it says in verse 17, Then they laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. So uh, and, and see, this is how come that man. I wish people would just read what the Bible says. Like, if you read what the Bible says, the Bible always makes sense. Uh, the disciples walked with Jesus for three and a half years and didn't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit until 50 days after his death, burial, and resurrection. He told them that they would receive the promise of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. at Pentecost, right? While they were in Jerusalem. So. What that tells us by common sense, if we just stop and think about it for us per se, or the Holy Spirit has us to think about it, that meant that there were a lot of Christians walking around who believed in the name of Jesus, but had no idea who the Holy Spirit was. Then whenever you go into the next book, right, after the four Gospels, which is the book of Acts, you see this phenomenon maybe like four or five times in Scripture where you see Christians who, no doubt, they believe in the name of Jesus all day, every day. They just like, dude, Jesus is the Son of God, but they ain't know nothing about the Holy Spirit. And then the disciples have to lay hands on the people, <clears throat> and then the Holy Spirit falls on But let's go back to the Italian dude, Cornelius. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Cornelius believed in the name of Jesus. You know what I'm saying? He, he was, uh, he was, he, he was, he was so proselyte Jewish that the Jews respected him because yeah, he, he was, was helping, he was sending money to build synagogues. Yeah, yeah, he was building synagogues, so he was well respected in the Jews community. Right. So Peter goes to this dude after having that trance, he has that vision while he was in a trance, and he preaches the gospel to the dude, and not only did he get saved and start speaking in tongues, family. everybody in the house starts it's speaking in tongues. Family. So it's like, so <laughs> Satan's, Satan's tactic has always been divide and conquer. Um, the disciples, getting back to the, the statement about Baptist not believing in the baptism, first off, the Lord said this to me. He was like, all that the Baptist doctrine is, is just a modern day interpretation of, of what the disciples who were following John. Mm -hmm. That's all because John was John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? People who, they're really close to getting the full revelation, 
but they still have certain denominational ties that are holding them back because the biggest thing that was holding John back was whenever he asked that stupid question when he was in prison. He sent his disciples to ask Jesus if he was really the Messiah. It's like, bro, like, you don't know, you know, see the sky open up, the Holy Spirit come down in the form of a dove. Right. You hear the voice of God say, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Let's hear ye him. And this is his cousin. This yeah. is his cousin. The very purpose of John even being born was to tell people that like, his cousin him. was the Messiah. Before, before so it's like, but, but whenever you look at that condition of the heart and you look at how the enemy uses that to trick people, that, that's the blanket that, that's over all iterations of, of Baptists. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, people who believe just enough, you know what I'm saying, to be like, well, no, nah, I'm in the club, but there's certain things that I don't want to embrace. Well, it's just like where you are now. They don't want to be charismatic. Right. They don't want to be the cost. Right. So they want to confine all movement and of, 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 of the church service. Right. They don't want real spontaneity. In other words, they don't want imp improvising. Exactly. Improvisation. Yeah, they want to control it. They want to control it. Yeah. What the Bible calls that all flesh. Exactly. And that's how come the services be so dead. And, then, and see, it also says what? God will not glory us about his flesh because right. he's not in there. And see, again, that's the domination. And so we don't want that. That's why I try to tell people, you got to learn how to, as a Kevin Deep guy, guy used to work with, I described him. He described what I did as free form Christianity. And I said, that's pretty good. Because it it's not denomination. Yeah. Like, it, it, ain't, it ain't relegated. I be, I be saying to people, like, uh, I talk to them about the limits of denominationalism. It's like, bro. So you can believe, so I just talked about 30 things, and you get 20 of them. But 10, the only reason I come you don't rock with them is because some man told you you can't believe them. Yeah. That's stupid. <coughs> yeah, but the, but the word says something else. Exactly. And that's what happened. People, you know, my, my uncle, my, my uncle, who was a deacon in my church, people come to my uncle, you know, when I first started out, and uh, they would talk to my uncle, and uh, he would tell me, he said, well, Say he's Baptist and he's not. That's how Uncle Bud would, would, would describe it. He, he said he said he's Baptist and he's not. He he knew that my certainly my background was Baptist because I was sitting up in the same church with him. But he knew that I'd gone beyond that. So and so I, I said Uncle Bud, you're right. I am Baptist and I'm not. And I I used to love to tell people. I'm Baptist. I, I go, I'm a, I'm a member of Eastern Star Baptist Church. By the way, I have fellowship with a lot of people, and I've held, I've actually been uh, ministered, you know, as social ministers and other folk churches. But guess what? It was it was what you what you would call watch care. I am a member of Eastern Star Missionary Baptist Church in Tarboro, North Carolina. I tell people I'm a Baptist. <coughs> Boy, I felt the power of God when I said that. I'm a Baptist. If you want to say denomination. But first of all, and first of all, I'm a Christian. I believe in the Bible. I'm, I'm not hung up on a denominational teaching. There were no Baptists. And you're right. People say that because of John the Baptist. You know, uh, the Bible talks about the presbyters, so folk became Presbyterians. Yeah, you know, so so the whole thing about it is, it's all a bunch of man-made stuff. The word Catholic means universal. So the whole thing about it is, it's man-made stuff. Either you are Christian or you're not. Either, see, there are no ifs and buts or maybe. But I used to mess folk up when I was talking about Baptists. You know? Salvation. Salvation is more than going to the altar to give your life to Christ. So Terry, the root word, which means healing or restoration in every area of your life. But guess what? If you don't believe that, you don't get it. 
It's more than just coming to Jesus as your Savior. He's your healer. He's your redeemer. It's more than just redeeming your soul. He can redeem other areas in your life as well. But guess what? If you don't make the choice to believe that, you get nothing. So get rid of those denominational teachings. And let's call it what it is. It's false doctrine. It's false doctrine. And false doctrine will send you to hell. False doctrine will make you miss your blessing. You know, I, I, I hate sickness and disease. And I can't get over folk dying when they don't have to die. You know, a lot of people die because they, they make the decision to die. We know people that could have been healed. People who were told, come in and get prayer. They wouldn't come. Now stop thinking about that. They die before their time. It doesn't have to happen. Whatever area that you need healing in, Jesus is more than willing to help you. God is provided by sending Jesus to the earth to redeem us from the curse that Adam gave us. The Bible says how that the first Adam failed, he sent the second Adam. Jesus is the second Adam or Adam, which means from the earth. The first Adam, the second Adam. But you've got to make the choice. You have the power to choose. You've got the power to choose right now what you get from now to the rest of your life. You will always have choice, but it's up to you. And it's because of the grace of God that you have choice. So choose life, like Deuteronomy. Choose life. Choose life. Now we're going to believe God regardless of uh, what it is that you need. We're going to believe God to meet that need. And we're only a few days from Pentecost. We're four days away from Pentecost. And thank God it's on a Sunday. So uh, we're looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to, to, to an explosion. I'm looking forward to an explosion of Exusia and Dunes. Let's get to some crates You know, I'm looking, I'm looking forward to it. Seeing what God's going to do. Um, so whatever the need is, look for God to meet it right now. We're going to pray now. Father, we thank you again, Lord, for your word. And Lord, you spoke that word to me early this morning. So I know that there's somebody in this audience that needed to hear this message tonight. <clears throat> Lord, if they're watching it in the archive, they need to hear this message. Help us, Lord, to come out of denominationalism. Father, I pray that strongholds be pulled down where false teaching, erroneous teaching, has led us astray. Father, put us on the right path. Keep us on the right path. Father, continue to pull the veil back that we might see the express image of your glory. Boy, I felt that. Jesus expressed the image of God. When you see Jesus as he truly is, then you can get to the Father. But it's by His Spirit. The Holy Spirit has to draw you. The Holy Spirit is tugging at your heart right now. Accept it. Don't worry about cleaning your life up. You have no power to clean your life up. So get that nonsense out of your head. Come to Jesus as you are right now. If you're backslidden, don't worry about that. Come to Jesus as you are right now. Father, we come against every principality, every power, every rule of darkness, every wicked spirit in high places. Father, I can shout for the Sandra Omen and Jared every Sunday. Father, I pull down with our soul to open and O spirit, there is our Sandra Omen and Sandra Omen. 
not Asian woman in the year, but the other side of the world, 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 the other side of the Father of the Son, the Oshere, the Ere, the Beer, the Beer, the Bassandra. Rose, Shere, the Sindra, Omni, the Ereba. Father of the Sabasamara, the Ere, the Beer, the Beer, the Bassandra. Ishmer, the Sindra, or the Ere, the Beer, the Beer, the Bassandra. Rose, Omni, the Ere, the Beer, the Bassandra. Father of the Son, the Oshere, the Ere, the Beer, the Beer, the Bassandra. Father of the Son, the Oshere, the Ere, the Beer, the Beer, the Bassandra, Omni, the Ere. Father, we pray over every school, a spot. Tired there, the best under the ocean, buried out of a Sunday. Father, we pray over every job. Hashima, Tara, and Asandra, over in the other beer. Robert, the best in the ocean, or there, the beer, the beer, the Sunday. Rose, the best in the ocean, or there, the beer, the beer, the Sunday. Father, we bind every jealous spirit, every spirit of strife, malice, greed, envy, variance, emulations. Issue of the central order and out of a sun, lasciviousness, or spa, tired the central woman in the air to be high. Rosso, men in the air of the Sandra. Ishmael, those of our day or the ever and our Sandra. Robert Eddie Bessendo, O Shara, the Sabara, the Ere of a Sunday. Roda Eshundra, over in the air to be out of a Sunday. Rasaba tomorrow, the Ere to be out of a Sunday. Rosso Mora, the central woman in the Ereba. Robert Eddie Bessendo, O Shara, the Ere of a Sunday. Robert Eddie was in the Oshara there to be in the Masande. Recipe Shmera there to be in the Masande Roman India. Rosame to borrow the Eldan Roman India to be in the Masande. Rosame or the Sindra Roman India to be out. Rosame Samara there to be in the Masande Roman India to be out. Rosame Samara there to be in the Masande Roman India to be out. Rosame Samara there to be in the Masande Roman India to be out. Rosame Samara there to be in the Masande Roman India to be out. Rebbeel of Osunda, O Shera, there are the beer to be under that. Father, we plead the blood of Jesus, O Spira, there's Samara, there are the beer to the Sunday. Rose, Shemera, Rose, Miss Samara, there's Sundo. Rose, Miss Samara, there are the beer to the Sunday. Rebbeel of Osunda, O Shera, there are the beer to be under the Sunday. Rebbeel of Osunda, O Shera, there are the beer to be under the Sunday, O Shera, and Alabama, and Alabama Sunday. Well, we bind at our side of a Sunday, O Sheridana. Rose open in the air of our Sunday. Rode be shown to O Sheridana Sunday. Isher of Sheridana of a Sunday. Robert had to be air of my Sunday, only in the air to be out. Robert had to be sent to O Sheridana to be in the Bassana. Rose of Mary, the Sandra, or in our Sunday. Resha Mara Dero to be the beer of a Sandra Roman in the other. Ish Mara Dero the other or an Ava Sunday. Father, give the people a revelation, Lord, of every aspect, Lord, of power from the original Greek words. Ish Mara Dorothy Rada the Sunda Osherida. Rosa Shara the Sindra Omanina. Rosa Bara the Sindra Osherida. Robert Eddie Bessendo, Father, we bind with Adam Bessendo Oshie. Rose of Ore de Erda Abbasando Oshie. Rose of Mace of Erda or Domanada Bessendo. Rose of Maradera de Bia de Bia de Bassando. Rose of Mace of Maradera de Bia de Bia de Bassando. Father, with Adam Bessendo Oshie or Adam Bassando. Father, continue to keep our enemies confused and confounded. Let them be confused and confounded. Father, continue to let our enemies be confused and confounded on every turn. Rasa basore de sindra orda, rose shimera de orda amanir de basanda. Father, we just thank you. Reda baroda basanda roman in diero. Roba de de basanda o shira de orda diero basanda. Roba de de basanda o shira de orda basanda. Father, we come against those, Lord. They go to the groves and the high places. 
Father, we bind every chain of incantation. Lord, we bind all rituals. Expired on the line. Rope it in and send the old share there to be at our. Rope it out of the sun to old share there to be at our sun. For we bind their enchantments. Asba, Torah, the sun to them. Rest and be shown to all out of the sun. Expired on the sun. For we bind every sun. Rasa, Torah, the sun to all out of Rode a share of the center or the ala. Rosa Bora the center of the ocean and the sun. Rose Shimara there the other over in the air. Rose Mitch Rodo Sir and Alabama and the sun. Robert Ed of the center of the ocean and the air to be in the mouth. Robert Ed of the center of the ocean and the air to be in the massage. Rose Mitch Rodo Bora the center of the India. Father, we can shake them up, Lord, and out of a Sunday. Robert had to be sent to O'Shea and there to be out of a Sunday. Father, shake up the person, Lord, responsible, Lord, I saw in a locker situation. Shake them up, Father, as only you can. Let everything reverse on them seven and four. Let all the cohorts he continually confused and confounded. Let them in that bin, Lord. Let them all be confused and confounded. All the Confederates, Lord, all the cohorts. Let them be confused and confounded. And let the angel of the Lord chase them. Rosemary of the Sierra Dada Basandi. Rosemary of the Sierra Dada Basandi. Rosemary of the Sierra Dada Basandi. Robert Ed of the Sender of the Sierra Dada Basandi. And Lord, even as they Sierra Dada Basandi open in the eye. Rosemary of the Sierra Ishmere there to be in the Roman in the air to be out. Roman there to be in the ocean and there to be in the light. Roman out of the sun to ocean and there to be in the light. Roman out of the sun to ocean and there to be in the light. Roman there to be in the ocean and there to be in the light. Roman out of the sun to ocean and there to be in the light. Roman there to be in the ocean and there to be in the light. Roman there to be in the ocean and there to be in the light. Roman there to be in the ocean and there to be in the light. Ish Meridera de Bia de Bizarra of my Sunday. Robert there to be sent to Oshir and Elba. Rosso de Berta Bassinger or another of a Sunday. Rosso Meninger or another of a Sunday. And Father, we pray, Lord, as we are winding now, Lord, we will come at Pentecost. The Lord, as the other day is, is uh, upon us, Father. Father, we pray <coughs> for a deluge of your spirit. Father, we pray for there to be such a heavy cabal. We just pray, Lord, that lives will be changed. Ishmael, those who are there to be out of a Sunday. Rosa Mora, the other over in India. Robert Ed, the Sindhu, O Shira, out of a Sunday. Lord, I pray for those who do not know you, Lord, that they be introduced to you on that day. And those, Lord, that do know you, I pray, Lord, that they get a reintroduction. Lord, we, we pray, Lord, that people see a display of your power, your glory. You said, no man, no flesh shall glory. Lord, we look for your glory to be made manifest. And we in, we in turn, Lord, ahead of time, give you all the glory. For the glory is thine. For without you, we are nothing. Lord, we are just lips of clay, clumps. We do wither as the grass. Ishmael, the Syrian, the Arab, the Abbasandra, Rose, Shemara, and Robin, and Ria. Rosa Mora de Sabara Dundra. Robert out of a sin to Oshera de Odiviana. Rosa de Shemira de Odiviana of a Sunday. Father, continue to pull the veil back that we might see. Help us, Lord, for us to see in the realm of the Spirit that we might have dreams. Lord, I pray, Lord, that we become master interpreters. Speak to us, Lord, in the night season in the morning. And speak to us, Lord, when we're awake. And again, Lord, I pray you keep us 
10 steps ahead of the enemy. Eshmara de Sindra or de Arda Basara. Rosa de Eshmara de Indra Roman in the Arda Basara. Keep us ever alert, Lord. Keep us as the apple of the eye. Boy, I felt the power of God. Rosa de Eshmara de Sindra de Sindra or de Arda de Arda de Arda de Arda de Arda Father, we give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, touch me. Lord, speak to her heart, Lord. Speak to her heart. For her problems to come to mind. Speak so straight to her spirit, Lord, that you show her something in the morning, Lord. Let her even wake up, let her eyes pop open. Let it continue to reoccur. That she can no longer deny what she said. She missed it, Lord, but at times we all miss it. Lord, I believe this is a pivotal time for her. Help her to see the mistakes that she made upon contact. And she made the bad decision to separate herself. Ask that you go to her and speak to her again and continue to speak to me. Lord, make it so plain to her that she could not stay in denial. Robert Arab is under all the area of the enemy of the Sunday. Robert Robert out of the center or share there to be able to handle the song with that. Yeah, that's interesting.